a lot of changes has happened in Singapore. The amount we earn like, is not enough, always not enough. Tough life, tough. Today, it seems like Singapore is disappearing in front of our very eyes. Since my days as a doctor, MP, is this in the interest of Singaporeans? I must look after the people. I miss uh, Kalang Stadium. But if you had gone back there 15, 20 years ago, the Kalang Raw would still be there every weekend. You know, the traffic, the people, the crowd. Impeccable vision from Abbasad. And a wonderful ball to Saswa. Selvaraj is waiting, so is Nasri. Abbasad! Yeah! The Malaysia Cup brought the whole nation together, not only the 60,000 in the stadium, but people watching live on TV. And those were the good days, and that's what you call being together as one Singaporean's identity. 14 years of waiting, finally over. But today the roar is completely silent. Today if you go to Kalang, you know, it's such a commercial area now. Very huge, very quiet, and it lost the spirit, the Singapore spirit. Every quarter, price changes. Every cost of uh, living, uh, the thing that you eat, your medical, is coming up. So, if you really go and to see into detail, most Singaporeans will feel that impact in long term. You need to have higher salary. And this is the reason why, as a university student right now, they will apply for causes that supposedly give them the highest starting income. And a lot of people will go into professions that they do not enjoy because of the higher starting income. And this usually comes with poor work-life balance. It comes with poor working conditions. I, I see a lot of my peers, a lot of my seniors even, go out there and actually suffer in the workplace. We are known to be a rich country, but yet we have a lot of old people working. And uh, yeah, some of my friends from overseas, they ask me, yeah, your country is so rich and why do you have old people working so hard, collecting cardboards and selling tissues. When we focus on like the diversity in Singapore, we look at race, we look at religion. But what about other things like say age or gender or disabilities or mental health or other conditions that people might have? The government has been reusing the same answers from the past 50 years. But I think in the new world that we have, these answers are no longer sufficient. The government needs a new set of answers to deal with a new set of problems. And this is why we need more alternative voices. I think we need more people with different opinions, with different perspectives on how we can make this a society for all of us. My father is not educated, but she likes to help people do things, what they need. The resident also like him very much here. Now they I never see people is like that. At times I get questioned if I'm a Singaporean. So people will come up to me and say, are you Singaporean? I will be taken aback. Because this was not a question that someone would ask, perhaps 20 years ago, or when I was in my NS, right, or when I started off in my career. And if we continue down the road, I don't know where will we end up. by Singaporeans. The ground feelings must be reflected. Singapore is like a blend of like Western while still maintaining some of like the traditional Singaporean cultures. We tend to bring people together of different backgrounds. Our race, we are multi-races. 
We can speak Mandarin and we can speak English and many of us can speak dialect too. I have a guy in Hawaii. We are Jew Nang, Hokkien Lang, Malayu, Tamilian, Gong Tong Yan. Singapore people work together no? to build up Singapore. For the better of everybody. We grew up in a beautiful, nice looking Singapore. We want to die in one eventually. That is what the Singaporean are.